All right, welcome to podcast number three from chapter eight. This uh, episode is going to cover the details of chlor of uh, photosynthesis, and we're going to start with the review of the structure of the chloroplast. Now, if you can remember from chapter seven, when we talked about the uh, cell parts, uh, you learned that the chloroplast was found only in plants. And it's one of the weird kind of organelles because it behaves kind of like its own prokaryotic cell. It's got a double membrane, as you can see right here, that's very similar to some bacteria. It also has its own DNA, and it's going to be able to go through its own cell division. But we're not going to really worry about that in this chapter. We're just going to pay attention to these structures right here. So let me pull this up here. All right, you see these little green poker chips right here? I'm going to color this one yellow. Now, these green poker chips are called thylakoids. Now, a stack of thylakoids is called a granum. Now, as you can see here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight granum. You can't call them granums. They're called grana. I'm going to write that over this way. Grana is plural. So, granum is singular. Grana is plural. Now, there's also these little skywalks that come in between the grana. And these are called lamellae, but we don't really about them. All right, you see this empty space right out over in here? This is called the stroma. And in the stroma, you're going to find some different parts of the photosynthetic reaction. So just this empty space out here. All right, so the thylakoid membrane is the place where the light-dependent reaction is going to occur. Now remember, the light-dependent reaction requires the use of a chlorophyll. Remember, a chlorophyll molecule is essentially a magnesium lollipop. That's supposed to be an M right there. And so a photon of light will hit it, and then an electron will pop off, and that'll go through the light-dependent reaction. That occurs on the thylakoid membrane. The only thing that's green in a plant are these little thylakoids. That's the only thing that's green. So if you see a really dark green leaf, just think of how many different chloroplasts and thylakoids there are in there. All right. The next part is that stroma that I was talking about. And remember, the stroma is this dead space right in here. Let's pull this up. All right. Now, this is where the Calvin cycle re occurs. Now, remember, the Calvin cycle is sometimes referred to as the light independent reaction. And we'll call it REACTS for short. All right. So remember, the thylakoid membrane is going to be the place where the light-dependent reaction occurs. The ATP and the NADPH is going to be delivered out into the stroma. And the stroma is the place where the Calvin cycle occurs. And remember, the Calvin cycle is going to make your glucose, which is H6, or I'm sorry, C6H12O6. Now, thylakoid membrane, so those are little green poker chips. The stroma is pretty much just a clear liquid that's outside of that. All right. All right, so what happens during the light-dependent reactions? The first step, water is split. This is a process known as photolysis. Remember, photo means light. Lysis means to break. You're going to break the water apart. And when you break the water apart, you're going to release some oxygen. And this will be the waste product. Now, when you split the water apart, some of the hydrogen that comes off is going to be used to make ATP through what is known as an electron transport chain. An electron transport chain obviously is going to think of like a fire brigade where the firemen would pass bucket to bucket to bucket. In this case, you're going to pass electron to electron to electron. And then this energy that's released from each exchange is going to be used to make ATP. There are going to be some high energy electrons that pop off of the magnesium atom that is inside the, uh, the chlorophyll molecule. And then some of the hydrogens are going to be picked up by our buddy NADP, which is an electron carrier. When it picks up a hydrogen and electron, it's going to be called NADPH. The ATP and the NADPH will then move to the stroma so that the Calvin cycle can occur. Remember, the Calvin cycle is also known as the light independent because it doesn't use light directly. And then in the Calvin cycle, you're going to be able to make glucose. I'm going to go back here one screen. Okay, you notice how all these are in color? That is a sign that means I need to know this. So make sure you know everything on this slide. All right, so let's go to the Calvin cycle, out in the stroma. All right, what happens during this cycle is with the help of the ATP and the NADPH that was made in the light-dependent reactions, 
carbon dioxide from the air is going to be used to make sugars. And remember that sugar is going to be mainly in the form of glucose, C6H12O6. All right, now this picture here pretty much sums up what we just talked about. All right, so here's your thylakoid. That's actually what's right on this guy. Slide this up. All right, so this is your thylakoid. So remember, I'm just going to draw that right in here. There's a thylakoid. Okay, and this whole stack, that's a granum. All right, remember the energy of light? Energy comes in little packets called a photon. This photon hits a chlorophyll molecule. An electron is going to pop off. This electron is going to be grabbed by NADPH. Some of the electrons are going to be used to make ATP. These guys will go out here into the stroma, which is the liquid part that surrounds the grana. The Calvin cycle is going to do a couple of turns. It's going to use the ATP and this NADPH to turn this carbon dioxide into sugars. Remember, that'll be glucose, C6H12O6. Now, remember all these electrons that we took from this chlorophyll? They need to be replaced. This water is going to be broken in a process called photolysis. If you say photolysis, you will spell it correctly. The waste product is going to be oxygen. And then carbon dioxide, your other reactant, you're going to be used to make your sugar. All right, so let's do this. The overall chemical equation is 6CO2 plus 6H2O will yield one molecule of glucose, C6H12O6, plus six molecules of oxygen. All right, so where are all these guys made from? Okay, this carbon dioxide is going to be used during the Calvin cycle, CC for short. This water is going to be used during the light dependent reaction, LD for short. This sugar is going to be made by the Calvin cycle, CC for short. And then this oxygen is going to be made during the light reactions. And I want you to remember that's done through a process called photolysis. Okay. Uh, that will wrap up this third podcast from Chapter 8, the details. Make sure that we know this picture really, really well. Not like I'm dropping any kind of hints. All right. Stay tuned for podcast number four.